Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Ferrite Beads, Common Mode Chokes and Answer to Riddle. There are two relevant videos that this, to this presentation. One is the actual riddle or video of the riddle. Here's the link. It's a grounding riddle, ferrite bead in the ground path. And also there is a background video on ferrite beads. Here's the link. I'm going to put these links on the page or the YouTube page of this video that you are now watching. So let me start with the background here. What is a ferrite bead? Ferrite bead is an element which has some impedance to it. That is a impedance, a function of frequency. Could be an SMT. This particular unit is an SMT unit, but there are many other shapes. And what we see here is the general behavior of the total impedance. This is the total impedance. And then it's broken down into a resistive and inductive part. X is omega L. This is the inductive part. And what we see here is that at the very beginning, uh, the element behaves like inductive because the induction part, inductive part is higher here than the resistive. And then the resistive part becomes more dominant and the impedance is primarily a function of the resistive part. Let me point out that this is an AC resistance. That is, it's only a function of frequency. At uh, DC, it's like zero, okay? So it is just being invoked when you have high frequency. So we have an inductive section, a resistive section, and a capacitive section, and this is when actually this is going down. It behaves like a capacitor now. In fact, uh, the phase will be accordingly. And there is a equivalent circuit. This is the behavioral equivalent circuit. These are not the actual values. This is just the fitting to this. And what we see here is that this behavioral model shows us that there is a DC component, RDC. This is for the DC current passing through the device. And then there's the AC component that actually mimics this behavior. Again, these are not the actual values. This is just behaving like this. As it turns out, you can have a very good fit with this particular model. Now, the basic application of a ferrite bead is a part of a filter. Say, in this case, we have a bead here, we have two capacitor, and suppose we have a current here injected into this section, then due to the high impedance of the bead, the current will be locked here at the input. If this ZI is like a capacitor at high frequency, it's low impedance. So therefore, this will eliminate this uh, ripple current from going into the secondary. And then if you have a voltage ripple here, again, if the impedance of the bead is much higher than the impedance here, say again, if it's a capacitor, then you have an attenuation here and therefore the V2 uh, signal will be much lower than the V1. So this is the very basic application of a ferrite bead. Now you can use an inductor, but in fact a ferrite bead is better why is this? Because if you just put an inductor, then you may have a quality factor Q, which is high in the system, it's a power system, and consequently, when there is a change here in the input, you're going to have some oscillation. So this is why in many cases you have to put a resistor across this inductor. So to actually reduce the total impedance here, but lowering the Q will eliminate, if the Q is say one or lower than that, it will eliminate the oscillation and you will not uh, get these uh, disturbance at the output. So this is a practice that is done. Now a ferrite bead has a built-in resistor which does not affect the DC. So this is like ideal. If we could have had only the resistive part, this would be even better, but as it turns out, you can't have it. So we settle for a ferrite bead which has in some parts a inductive par, uh, part and then in some frequency range a resistive behavior and in fact in some special cases you may have oscillation with the ferrite B2 but this is not a subject I'm going into it in this presentation. Let's see now what's the basic application of a ferrite bead. Suppose you have a system here I'm showing a power supply it could be a battery it could be a line fed power supply 
then we have a two unit with a common ground here. And if this unit is say uh, switching and this one is switching, you may have some ripple current going here from here back through the ground like this. Also, you may have some ripple current from here coming into here. And also you can have actually a ripple current coming from here back here to this unit. So there could be a lot of interference between these units. And this is when we can use uh, very nicely the beads to put filters at the input to the power supply. By this, uh, we sort of lock, say the ripple current here, the ripple current here. And if there is some ripple here, and avoid as much as possible with the impedances involved, the injection of uh, disturbance from one unit to another. So this is the very basic application of a ferrite bead. Now one has to take into account that there is some voltage drop on the bead, not very high, because again the DC resistance could be very low, and there are beads for very high current, so the resistance could be indeed very low, but still there is some drop, so in some sensitive application, uh, this may not be uh, good enough, and you'll have maybe to resort to a inductor in which uh, you can get actually lower resistances. So this is one point to observe. And now let's introduce another problem here, and that is suppose you have a power section, a high power section, which has a uh, switching and high ripple. And obviously you'll put here a capacitor to capture the ripple, but you cannot avoid some of the ripple to circulate in this uh, path, say. And as a result, you are going to have a voltage drop here. Okay, so that because the current now is flowing through these lines or, or even a, a ground plane. So, in this case, if you have a say, disturbance here, you have a voltage drop here on this line, then this will now cause a disturbance and an error in the signal fed from one unit to another, because now the voltage here is not equal to voltage here, but rather this voltage plus this disturbance. Here it is, okay? So this is very bad, because, and this is all because of this power uh, section which causes a current through this line. So this is why we use separate grounds. So here we have a line or a ground plane for the high power and then we have another line or ground plane for the say digital part or low frequency or low power part and these are connected at one point of course but uh, current, the high current is not passing through this section, so therefore it's not causing voltage drop. So this is a practice that we use. Now suppose we'd like to feed the signal from this part, say a digital part, a processor, to the power, and then you have a problem again, because you have here voltage drop on this line, and then this signal here is corrupted because you have this voltage plus the voltage here on the line. So in this case, what you have to do is you have to put an isolator, okay? This isolator isolates the galvanic connection between these two grounds, passing only the signal. So here you get a pure, between here you get a pure signal, which is a replica of the signal here without the problem of this uh, disturbance here, assuming of course that the rejection here is good and the isolation is good. The isolation could be made of, uh, say, a magnetic uh, connection or capacitive or maybe optical. So there are many, a number of ways to do this and there are different qualities and there's a question of bandwidth, etc. And these are available. However, in this case, you do need a power supply here, which is referred to the power section here, and then you need another power supply, which is referred to this section here. So it's a little bit costly in terms of the power supplies. Another way to go is to use a differential connection here, which can tolerate a common mode. And in fact, uh, you can use it for communication. And also, in fact, there is a today a gate driver, which will accept 
a differential input. So if it accepts a differential input, then um, and if the common model rejection is good enough, then this could be a solution. However, if this uh, disturbance here of the ground is high or very high, uh, it may exceed the possibilities of this uh, rejection here, and this could cause a problem. So in this case, you'd like to go back to the uh, isolation idea. So now we have isolation here, which is fine. I, we have solved this uh, problem here, but then uh, this power section, which if it is high power, then it can inject disturbance here in this unit and in this unit through the uh, power and, and ground here. Although obviously you would have a capacitor, but still some of the signal may be still passing through. So in this case, again, you can put a ferrite bead here to sort of block the current here so that this, this is high impedance as compared to the impedance here, so the ripple will be locked here. If the power is very high, probably you'd like to go to a inductor rather than a ferrite bead because again, the voltage drop may be too high and there aren't ferrite bead for very high current, okay? So this is one possibility to block this uh, injection. However, that's not the end of it. This section would have some capacitance to ground. This could be the enclosure. This could be actually a connection to the earth. It could be actually a, a real connection or through some capacitance. Stray capacitance always are present. And the same thing goes for this section. You may have some stray capacitance here to the casing, to ground. And as a result, you are now going to have another path here. See here, this is the disturbance. We see here, this, this path here going into this and into this and injecting noise into these two units, okay? So this could be a problem. So to remedy this, you can actually put a bead here. Once you put a bead here, you sort of isolate this part here from this part, so the injection of RF or interference, electromagnetic interference, conductive interference, will be minimal depending on the impedances here and the isolation here. So this could be a case in which you would like to put a bead into this section. Now, again, this could be high current here, so it might be actually better to put a bead here, which is the lower current section, Again, this is now, this section is com completely protected from here. And uh, the disadvantage is that here you will inject some noise into this part, which may be in some cases okay as compared to injecting noise to this part, which could be very sensitive. So here are the possibilities of putting actually a bead in the ground loop, in the ground path. But this is not new. Uh, we know that if you have a, uh, say, a system with fed by the main, the line, and then you have the actual system here, you'd like to put an impedance here to avoid uh, this common mode current that's going through. This is required, of course, by some uh, standards now, EMI standards. And you could have used a bead here, but the bead has a high impedance so that the uh, current, if the current is your feeling is high, then this will interfere with this current. And also the bead does not have a very high impedance. So if you like to get a very good rejection, you like to get a very high impedance, a common mode impedance here. And this is why we're using a common mode choke. Now this choke now present a high impedance a high common mode impedance, but a low differential impedance, so that for the actual current going through, the impedance is low. And here, I'm showing it in these simple systems. So for the common mode, if this is connected, this is connected, you see here an inductor. The fact that these are two wound on the same core makes it just one inductor with two wires in parallel. So it's an inductor. Okay, and the value of this inductance could be very high. On the other hand, 
If you look now at the differential impedance, since the current is going this way and then coming back to the other way, here it's going out of the dot and here into the dot, they are sort of canceling each other. So in fact, you see a short. Well, in fact, it's not a short because there's some leakage between these two. So there is a remnant leakage here, but still the impedance is very low. So this is the solution that you like to have in this case between say the input and the system. Now, what about a similar case, which we are very familiar with, of course, here's a PC, here's the printer, and again, you may have this circulating current. Well, you might say, well, the PC is not connected to ground, but still, it has a transformer to the mains, and this transformer has a capacitive uh, parasitic capacitances, so therefore you always have some capacitance to ground, even if it's not connected at all, just from the table. So you have a signal passing through here, which might interfere either with the PC or the printer, and therefore what you like to do is to put a bead. Now this is a different bead here, this is a sort of a hollow unit, which has a hole in it, so you pass the two wires or more through it, and what it is, is basically a common mode choke. That's what it is. Only that it has only one winding. Okay, this is one winding here, and this is another winding here. And obviously, the impedance will be dependent if this is only one winding on the size of this bead, material permeability. You can get uh, several microhenries, which could be good enough as a impedance for the common mode impedance to block uh, interference between these two units. Now for the differential mode, that is the differential impedance, it's very good because again the current is going this way and coming back and the dots of course are opposite so it's like a short. So it's not disturbing the high frequency data signal that are passing from one unit to another. So this is, of course, uh, much better than just putting, say, beads here, because the beads will corrupt the signal, uh, because they're going to have uh, some attenuation to the high frequency signal. Uh, so therefore, the bead is really a good solution in this situation. So now I'm going back to the riddle. What was the riddle? The riddle Again, this is the title and here's the link, which again will be on the page of the YouTube uh, video that you are now watching. And here is the riddle. Instead of saying that uh, if you have a power supply and then you have a system, you'd like to put a bid in between in order to reject uh, injection of noise between uh, EMI from one unit to another, which is very well known, of course. And the question was, what about putting a bead here, okay, in the ground side? That was the question. Is it a good or bad idea? And I brought three examples here. Here's one example, which says from the internet, it says isolate analog and digital ground at a single location in the ground plane, okay? And then put here a bead in between, okay? Here's the bead. This is not exactly this bead here. I couldn't find this one. It might be obsolete. So this is pretty close. Uh, what we see here that at uh, 100 uh, megahertz, uh, here 100 regular, the impedance is indeed 75 ohms. This is from the same company. It's a different uh, unit. And this idea in general is not good because if you have, say, two sections here, say digital and analog, and you like to pass a signal between one to the other, if this would be a single ground plane here, and if the power is not too high, this is okay, no problem with it. But if you now put a bid into it, you might have a fairly high impedance for the bead and a high voltage drop, even with a not too high current here, the signal current, and therefore you're going to corrupt the signal that you are fed to this unit here from this unit here, because then you have the added uh, voltage drop on this bead. So this is in general a very bad idea. It could be only okay 
if this, this signal here, signal paths, is isolated. If it's isolated, then that's fine, but it's not, there is a problem. And here is another example. What we see here is a unit which is sort of connected to another unit. This could be like a Wi-Fi or a uh, Bluetooth or any other transmitter, say. And what we have here is, first of all, we have the, the DC path here, the two bits here, okay? And then we have there two bits in the signal line here. In fact, there are also capacitors here, one nanofarad and one nanofarad here. Well, this is a bad idea. Not because of this, but because of these, because um, if you have this bead and you have this uh, capacitor, then you, you have a low pass filter here. And obviously, if the signal is of high frequency, the communication signal, then you'll have a problem unless you, this frequency is, of course, much lower than the bandwidth of this filter. And the question is why you need it, okay? Uh, the, having this may be okay if this would be isolated. If it's not, again, this is adding some common mode to the, the signal. So this may not be a good idea at all. Uh, in this case, you'd like to put a bit here, a common mode ch uh, choke, you might say, a common mode impedance rather than a differential impedance. So this will have uh, to um, avoid the injection of a uh, common mode noise from one unit to another. And here is a third example in which we have a signal which is isolated, which is very nice. And then we have what I think is the DC, well, it doesn't say, but I think it's the DC has here an inductor, which is nice for as a filter. And then also a bead here. This is okay because this section here, which goes to a cable, then goes to another unit, is completely isolated. And, and therefore, there is no problem here. There's no common signal to the two grounds here. So these could be separate grounds and everything is really nice here. So now, what were the questions of the riddle? The first one was, is a ferrite bead in the ground path a good idea? And if so, when and for what purpose should it be used? Well, from what we have seen, that it could be beneficial, that is a ferrite bead in the ground path for EMI rejection, only if the signals are isolated. If they are not, there is a big problem. If you are passing a signal from one section to another and there is a bead in between, you have a voltage drop which is added to the signal. And then there was another, this should be number two, of course, out of the three web examples, which can be adopted without hesitation? And this is number three, because this number three here, which you see it here, is a very nice solution for this case in which you have a unit which is sort of separated and then you have good isolation so it's no injection from one of noise from one to another and this could be uh, used without any problem and without a question. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.